Welcome to Beyond the White Paper with your host, Kuji. Today we have the dev team from 0x Bitcoin live on the mic. So, um, can we just get a uh, quick rundown? What is 0x Bitcoin? 0x Bitcoin is the first token to be distributed exclusively, exclusively through mining. There's no ICO, airdrop, nor pre-mine. And it was designed to be an alternative to Ether to use as a currency within Ethereum. And we think it'll be desirable because it has a hard supply, hard inflation rate, um, more fair distribution compared to Ether, and it's compatible with smart contracts. And um, we kind of think of it as putting it in the best worlds uh, from Bitcoin and Ether and putting it into one. All right, China, taking the commodity-like characteristics of Bitcoin and taking the programmability of ERC-20 tokens and putting them together. So you're grabbing all the best features from being a token on the Ethereum blockchain and Bitcoin. So are you aiming to overtake Bitcoin down the road or do you still see Bitcoin as a uh, viable um, currency asset? I, I would say that, um, we're, you know, we're not trying to replace Bitcoin. I mean, we'll still use Bitcoin, you know, um, I'll still use Bitcoin. Um, we just are big believers in Ethereum and, uh, you know, I guess you could say Ethereum maximalist, you know, I mean, we, we love the Ethereum platform, the smart contract that, that you could do the smart contracts and how you can develop for it. And we see zero X Bitcoin as being, you know, a, a stable store of value currency on, on Ethereum, you know, um, so essentially like Bitcoin, but on Ethereum, but we're not trying to replace Bitcoin in any way or any of these other uh, pure mine cryptos, you know, because something you have to understand about zero X Bitcoin is it's a, uh, it's the first of its kind, like, and it's 100% complete. The smart contract, it's been written. You can't change it. It's locked. Um, the project is 100% done, you know, and, um, it's a, uh, I just, I, I, I see it personally as being more of a uh an alternative uh because right now everybody kind of treats ethereum as a um, store value or you know and they use it you know but it, ethereum is more of a uh, it's a it's a gas you know for gaps on on ethereum and so we see uh, a need a real need in ethereum for a pure mine crypto and that's essentially that's what um, zero x bitcoin is yeah, I don't see it replacing Bitcoin. I don't think that's no. the objective. I just think it's an alternative to use instead of Ether. I think it has some better tokenomics than Ether. And I think that makes it desirable. Uh, when I think about Bitcoin, a big important part about Bitcoin is uncensorableness. And, and so as far as um, Bitcoin goes, what is the relatively small blocks you can you can run a, a node on a, a Raspberry Pi and um, there's really kind of no way of stopping it in, in that sense. And then um, kind of in, in contrast, what OX Bitcoin is, is it's Bitcoin for within the Ethereum ecosystem. So it's it's kind of uh, do the, the success of, of Ethereum and, and as Ethereum grows and expands and improves um, OX Bitcoin, retains all of those those positives and those those benefits to ethereum and and over time when ethereum uh, t goes towards fully proof of stake it'll it'll have certain properties and we're kind of um tied to those and how uncensorable ethereum will be um and, and how uh inexpensive it is to transact ox bitcoin will will retain all of all of those properties so It'll it'll kind of depend on the uncensorableness of the Ethereum platform, while OX, while Bitcoin um, maintains its own properties there. But but otherwise, the uh, point of OX Bitcoin is to retain as much of those properties as possible. And in in reading the the Bitcoin white paper, a, a big part about mining is that. Uh, mining uh, mining Bitcoin creates what's what they call in the white paper a a decentralized timestamp server and so the the most problem is solved by this this competing of hash rate where as you mine a block you 
push out there, an important part is what the current time is. Um, and so OX Bitcoin is is actually instead of using hash rate to solve that part of of Bitcoin, and in in that I mean that there's the the consensus model, the uncensorableness, the distribution, the transfers, and then separately the distribution. We or rather OX Bitcoin um, uses Ethereum's ecosystem of ERC20 tokens and those transfers and whether it's proof of work consensus or proof of stake consensus, and then uses the OX Bitcoin smart contract to handle um, distribution through Bitcoin-like uh, mining rules. So why Ethereum? Why not another smart contract platform like Komodo, EOS, or NEO? Uh, what what draws you guys to Ethereum? So my interest in how I came to discover OX Bitcoin is that I was uh, I'm a software developer. I've been a software developer for ten years, building distributed systems at a company that got a, acquired by Oracle, and I was really interested and excited by Ethereum and the smart contract language, um, Solidity being a fairly decent mix of. Um, and that, I guess that's a high compliment in software, fairly decent, um, of, uh, of JavaScript and, uh, and C, um, which are languages I both like. And so I was in the process of building a few dApps um, around uh, job boards and using a Ethereum blockchain to host uh, the job postings and also to accept payment for sharing the job board. And I saw OX Bitcoin, I was like, Wow, this doesn't exist yet. This is something that that should. It combines a lot of the econ of the hard economics that people in crypto like um, that you can anonymously mine and get these tokens. It doesn't have any of the downside Ethereum ecosystem of ICOs and um, possibly uh, fraudulent monetary practices. Of oh yeah, we just got a wire of five million dollars and issued uh, 5 billion tokens to ourselves secretly. Um, and <laughs> and so, but, but to your question of why Ethereum, I, I think it's kind of the best smart contract um, platform out there on a number of levels, including codability, um, including the, the smart contract language itself. And I've looked at some other things um, like, um, Sorry, the the I've looked at um, a bunch of other smart contract languages, and they're all um, just harder to develop in, and, and don't have as mature of an ecosystem as Ethereum. Do you plan on having a mainnet launch, or will Zero X always live on the Ethereum blockchain? So, so we're um, building, um, I guess, a, a second layer system. So it's uh, kind of always going to refer to chain um and we think that's important because we want compatibility with smart contracts we want uh to be tokenized within um smart contracts um but what we're building and um is what we're calling the uh, the lava network and so it's a way of um layer two type transactions so you have a distributed set of lava packets that um, once you deposit your tokens in the Lava Wallet smart contract, um, that smart contract enables it to be able to send off-chain um, payments. And, and so we're, we're building that out and, and developing that ecosystem um, as a way of managing uh, inexpensive and kind of reducing fees by having uh, many transfers and payments that only require transaction on chain, so that that many to one um, scalability to reduce fees, and also a, a process that will let uh, payers pay for transactions in OX Bitcoin, and then when those uh, payments eventually or uh, go on chain, um, just like. Um, uh, the Lightning Network, um, that that payment would be done by what we're calling the relayers, and that fee would be paid in Ethereum. So the the end user and kind of the iPhone user who um, down the line is going to scan a QR code and send a, a layer two Lava Wallet payment to the the merchant can be accepted by a relayer and for an OX Bitcoin fee uh, pushed on chain. 
So basically the point of that would be to send an Ethereum transaction, but without needing Ether to pay the fee. So like there's been a couple of times in my cryptocurrency experience where I wanted to make a transaction on Ethereum, but I actually didn't have any more Ether. However, I did have an ERC20 token and through the Lava Wallet, you'll be able to make this transa tra transaction, offer somebody some of your ERC20 token, or in this case, Xerox Bitcoin, and they'll pay the Ether fee for you through this relay system. So if I want to send an ERC20, but I don't own any ETH, and I can't afford the gas to send the token because I don't have ETH, um, then I can use the Lava Network, which will allow me to send the tokens without the need for ETH because someone will actually pay the e the ETH gas in exchange for my tokens. So like, let's say I made a, a token, the Kuji token, and uh, I have a wallet that only has Kuji token in it, and I want to send that, but I can't because I don't have any Ethereum to pay for the gas. So then I send the Kuji token out to the Lava Network. The Lava Network, um, I'm paying someone in my token to send out my tokens, essentially. The Lava Network is, it's ERC20 agnostic. So it, it doesn't matter if it's Xerox Bitcoin or some other ERC20 token, but we think that Xerox Bitcoin should be the primary coin to be used in the system just because it has commodity-like characteristics. So unlike other coins that might've had unfair distributions, whether it was an ICO or a pre-mine, Xerox Bitcoin didn't have any of that, which makes us think that it, it'll have the best, um, it should store value better than these other coins. So you could use that with other ERC20 tokens, but just because this is more of a commodity, we think this is more desirable to be used in that system. So which blockchain technologies do you guys see as a primary or even potential competitor to Zero uh, X Bitcoin? I think one of the big competitors that came up was uh, basically a carbon copy. That was the first one in the history of the mineables of Zero X BCH. Uh, I believe the code was identical or almost identical. And since then, a couple others have popped up, maybe Scorch is one. That's been interesting. I know somebody made a zero X gold, which has some similarities, but not entirely the same. As of now, there does not seem to be anything that's a major competitor to zero X Bitcoin, just because zero X Bitcoin is inherently simple and does exactly what it wants to do in what I think is the simplest and best way. So it would be hard to create a mineable token that wants to be a currency token just like zero x bitcoin uh if you try to add some complications to the token you also take away from a lot of the uh benefits of zero x bitcoin simplicity and transparency which is why i think we haven't seen even after six months any other uh pure mind token on the ethereum blockchain that is really trying to take the the reins from zero x bitcoin there doesn't seem to be a necessity so like zero zero x bitcoin it uses uh it was created first and then from zero x bitcoin uh the uh eip 918 which is the uh ethereum improvement proposal uh 918 is the mineable token standard and so we encourage uh we encourage a lot of other projects to to take that uh, mineable token standard and create their own mineable token because we see uh mineable tokens as being a better distribution method than tokens being pooped into existence out of thin air like they are now you know a lot of icos that's all they are is they, they you know they just create these coins out of thin air and then people uh, buy into them with icos and so we see mining as another option uh not necessarily uh the only option just as another option to uh to dis distribute uh tokens on the ethereum network and so um there's been other people who have taken zero to the coin and uh, have, have released a few other uh, different clones of them. And nothing that's really stood or that's really stuck, but there are uh, there are a couple that are, are, are working on it at, at the moment. And uh, I think we'll be able to see more in the future. Um, that uh, area is still growing, but um, by no way means are we, um, you know, we're not, we're not against anybody else trying to do that or, you know, we, we don't see it being as like competition to us, you know, we, we want to encourage it because the more mineable tokens there are, it's good. It, what's good for 
you know, more mineable tokens is good for us, you know? A great answer. Um, I could, if I could add just one small, uh, small addition and it's, um, again, not a direct, um, competition, but it's, it's something similar. So it's worth noting, um, uh, uh, I guess a, a project or startup or ICO called live peer, uh, did something recently with their token distribution. So live peer is, uh, kind of like a content delivery network. So like YouTube has a content delivery network. Um, uh, Amazon Web Services is all about distributing. Um, my, my Alexa just lit up. Sorry, um, di distributing content, and so they they are tokenizing um, their their system, and they wanted to distribute their token, so they use sort of this uh, Merkle root mining drop. So to grab, a, say, two tokens, you sent a transaction on chain that had so much gas, it cost like $2. And in claiming your two tokens, it also sent out uh, 10 transfers uh, from a, a kind of snapshot of the Ethereum uh, blockchain from when they launched the token that sent your token out to 10 other random um, addresses. And I think their their project is is pretty interesting in the way that they distributed this token. Um, we're building this this community around uh, mineable tokens because we think it's kind of a more fair distribution. The process that they used is a little arbitrary, and and who gets these tokens? It's kind of whoever was there first, and not necessarily who expended resources. Um, so our, as, as uh, Jeff Dupp was saying, and we were saying earlier about uh, token distribution through mining um, as an alternative to an ICO, uh, we're kind of hoping down the line that, that more projects kind of become aware that you can make tokens mineable and distribute them through proof of work mining. And there's also um, other ways to kind of key into that um, so that you can kind of, as OX Bitcoin blocks get mined, you can you can distribute your tokens. You could also kind of mirror um, OX Bitcoin's on-chain distribution and just kind of send and kind of airdrop um, to OX Bitcoin holders. Those are just kind of possible ways. And this is more conversation of where we want the community of, of mineable tokens to evolve to, as opposed to kind of saying, you know, currently, where we're at, but that's part of our vision for uh, OX Bitcoin and mineable tokens um, down the line. So when it comes to kind of who are the competitions, we think kind of um, more tokens should kind of understand and look at this route and kind of follow in our footsteps. Uh, in case anyone was interested in the history of trying to create something like zero X Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain, uh, in October of 2017, a couple of months before the Xerox Bitcoin contract was deployed, uh, someone named Alex Miller, uh, I'm going to post the Medium article in the Discord in a second, created a token called eCoin. And eCoin also has a 21 million cap. And eCoin was distributed to people who uh, validated that they mined Ethereum blocks. So essentially, uh, I missed the first part. I don't know if anyone talked about merge mining yet, uh, but basically what you can do now is you can mine zero X Bitcoin. And as long as your pool is compatible, you can get other coins uh, kind of for free with that, uh, without actually diverting hash power. So someone did that with actually the uh, Ethereum main hashing. So they were able to distribute this token called eCoin similarly in a way to how Bitcoin is distributed just based on every time a, a block is mined um, without actually diverting extra hash power to eCoin. So the main difference is that Xerox Bitcoin actually has its own uh, its own hashing, its own hash rate, and eCoin was using uh, Ethereum's hash rate, which has some problems, but it was the very first, from what I understand, experiment in trying to create a true store of value commodity token on Ethereum. Now, will a clogging of ETH affect mineable tokens as well, or will the Lava Network alleviate that um, and those kind of issues? No, it, it, it's, it, everything sits on the Ethereum network. So when the gas prices are really high um, on Ethereum, you know, and you want to transfer a token, you know, we 
we fall under the same properties as every other ERC20 token. You know, uh, we have to pay the gas. You know, just like everybody else. And uh, and that's what we're and that's what we're hoping, you know, to help kind of alleviate and solve with with Lava Wall in the future. And then that goes back to the point where, you know, where Micros was touching on that any inherent properties that Ethereum receives in the future, we shall receive also. So when you know when they go to uh, proof of stake and whatnot, and they're supposed to scale their transactions, we also scale with them, you know, without automatically. Are there any misconceptions about the project that you guys would want to clear up? Anything from false news sources like crypto Twitter and the like? I think the the biggest misconception, I think, is that somehow there's some central entity that's paying people to shill our project on various platforms um i know that's kind of like become a meme at this point uh but xerox bitcoin seeing as there was no ico no prima and i mean just logistically there just are not funds to pay for an entire shilling team but some people seem to think that uh someone high up is basically running the whole thing as a scam uh other scams i've heard of or theories is that there's a pre-mine built into the contract or that uh, the deployer of the contract can assign himself as many tokens as they want. All of those, you could just read the solidity um, <laughs> and find out none of that's true. Um, kind of in relation to work is only useful for um, securing the chain, securing a chain. Um, and it's subtle and, and delicate issues. So it's like, and it's what's not subtle and is kind of pretty obvious is like, all right, you have a proof of work Ethereum network and you're adding proof of work distribution on top of that. Like, you know, there's a lot of like, like, what, what are you doing? You're and an interesting, um, kind of an interesting complaint that I saw recently is you're, you're leeching hash power from securing the Ethereum network and, and putting it into your token. Um, and, and I think that's sort of interesting and maybe even valid, um, e even in the, the short term, right? So you're taking GPUs and instead of them mining Ethereum or Ether, um, they're mining OX Bitcoin. So from like a purist crypto perspective, like, Hey, you're, you're weakening Ethereum. You're making it more susceptible to 51% attacks. And, and so. You know that all that's interesting, and I, I think that what um, needs to be understood more about the OX Bitcoin project is that a lot of the the core um, developers and kind of people that are really into it view it as a, a longer term um, project. So uh, view it as something that is going to remain as Ethereum transitions from proof of work to proof of stake. And so talking now about uh, a proof of stake um, chain that's not being secured by proof of work, um, that that argument kind of kind of falls away a bit. And so what what we're in a way is we're a group of both Ethereum maximalists and um, proof of work currency maximalists who <laughs> Um, love Ethereum and, and love mining and kind of want mining to still exist in Ethereum um, as it transitions from proof of work to proof of stake. And then um, kind of just another kind of, I don't know if it's uh, uh, theoretical or philosophical or um, what, what have you, but what, when the Bitcoin um, white paper and you think about Bitcoin um, more generally, the the reason why um, hash power is used to secure the chain is because no other alternative really existed that's um, decentralized, um, federated, uh, trustless, um, and secure. And so had a kind of a interesting question is had Ethereum existed first or other um, cryptocurrency networks or smart contract programmable networks existed first um 
and Bitcoin had come after, would it would it really make sense to use necessarily use mining to secure the chain as opposed to using something like uh, post proof of stake Ethereum for securing the chain and then adding in a proof of work currency on top of that. And so there were examples of uh, mineable currencies uh, before Bitcoin, um, like e-gold um, and other other things like that, um, reusable proof of work, um, but they kind of centralized point of failure. So um, OX Bitcoin is kind of a, a, a mish, a, kind of a not obvious um, change on all that, that kind of relies on Ethereum as a, a central source of truth. And what, what plans do you guys have moving forward into the next year or even next quarter or just, you know, start of uh, 2019 here? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So what's, um, I think the best part about OX Bitcoin is that um, it's kind of just a group of people that, that glom together. Um, so there, there's likely um, some folks working on some, some cool things that we don't even know about yet and they'll, they'll share it. Um, when they're ready. Um, so there's a kind of a bunch of people that are uh, minor developers. Um, and, and I see uh, Lieutenant Tofu um, typing away in the main chat. He's uh, uh, <laughs> coded one of the most used um, hey, um, <laughs> GPU miners um, for uh, NVIDIA. Um, so there's so there's work on, on continuing to make um, miners more accessible, um, faster. There's a growing community of FPGA um, OX Bitcoin miners. Um, there's, um, sorry, I'm, uh, <laughs> think, uh, as I think for a sec, if someone wants to jump yeah. in. Um, and then also see we have, you know, the, the Zero X Bitcoin Foundation. We, uh, we started that up um, probably about two months ago, I'd say officially. A month and a half and um just uh, kind of a foundation nonprofit foundation to uh you know help uh help push uh, the the acceptance and the development and even fund help fund some of these uh uh mineable tokens these erc 918 mineable tokens and um you know not not just zero it's bitcoin ourselves you know we, we want to we want to help the, the whole community as a whole when it comes to mineable tokens. How is the foundation supported? Are there contributions through the block rewards or is it slow, solely through the donations and uh, like basically gen generous givings through the community? Donations. Donations, yeah, 100%. It's yeah. all been whoever's given like out of their own Volunteering, pocket. donations. Some, uh, community members, we've raised, you know, a little bit one time to try to get it on the exchange, but... um. Everything has been straight from uh, from people who have mined it and have donated it. That's one of the downsides of having uh, a token distributed from the very first block through mining without a pre-mine, no ICO. It basically means that uh, if, if you want to build something with it, you're going to have to work at it. You're going to have to rely on your community. You're going to have to rely on people who are passionate about the project because you can't just pay people off to do work for you or to push your marketing. Um, and I think it's a blessing and a curse uh, obviously, it's difficult to have a foundation in which your funding sources are limited because you never had a big ICO. Uh, but at the same time, it, it's, it's allowed it's for a truly unique community. Uh, everyone who's doing stuff for Xerox Bitcoin is doing stuff from their own accord. Um, and, you know, it ends up seeing a lot more genuine to me right now. And uh, mm -hmm. I think I, I enjoy the way that yeah. it's, it's set up. It seems to be a really good system. We're getting a lot of good projects. Uh, we're getting a lot of help from the community, just doing things like graphic design. Um, I mean, even just like making memes, things like that. It's just, uh, there's just a lot of energy and people are doing it all without being paid. And everyone's uh, kind of pitching in because they love the project, right? And so I, I think if you look at a lot of established projects, if you go on their discords or their telegrams, a lot of it's dead. The only talk is about price. Um, and that's what happens when you try to artificially create a community by just throwing a lot of money at a marketing company, you know? Uh, what are you guys doing to increase global adoption? It's been a little, it's been tough too, you know, because we, you know, we've 
we've put our feelers out there. I mean, we've submitted a lot of exchange listing requests. And I mean, some of the stuff that we get come back at us, you know, like they want 10 Bitcoin or six Bitcoin. I mean, $100,000. The, the, yeah, $100,000. And like, I, it's just that whole, the whole ICO atmosphere that we went through the, the beginning of this year, you know, through till now, I, it just, it really just, it really kind of tainted the whole, you know, listing market. And it, it's really hard to get listed on exchange when you're a uh, kind of a grassroots uh, passion project, you know. Getting on popular websites like Cointelegraph or CoinDesk, Internal or Infernal Toast had this awesome piece on just the vicious cycle of ICOs and marketing cryptocurrencies. You know, these ICOs are raising a lot of money, and that's getting them the ability to get on these exchanges and news websites when it's really just like a, a marketing ploy. And a lot of these coins don't have much more than that. But to me, one of the biggest ongoing developments is just the community. And I think we've seen a steady rise in that over time. If you take a look at our Discord page, over time, there just seems to be one more added person um, consistently, just another person that's really interested in the project and passionate about it. And over time, that number is going to continue to rise. And we're going to continue to develop this strong community. And to me, that's equally as important as some of the technical updates. And, and you know, it's been really, uh, I've, had, I've been real optimistic on from the atmosphere of Zero X Bitcoin lately has been, um, you know, when we were going through the whole uh, kind of that whole ICO dump, you know, in the July, beginning of August, and, you know, th things were just kind of looking real crappy for crypto, you know, um, we actually, I mean, our community our uh the passion uh the development the innovation in our community like it was more you know as strong then as it had ever been and so it kind of gave me a lot of hope and a lot of optimism about uh you know why i why i help out with this project and why um you know you know i want to be passionate about it is because others are, are doing the same thing and, and it's contagious you know and so it makes me feel good that you know that we went through some of these tough times and uh you know we, we really didn't falter too much you know we try to be as uh, inclusive and open-minded and kind of, yeah, just open, open arm to anyone who joins in and um, mm -hmm. I just talk through and explain mineable tokens and that, you know, no, there's no leader. There's, there's no one uh, in charge of a big piggy bank or in charge of a, a marketing budget. And we're just all here because we want to be and helping out how we can. And a lot of um, folks, I mean, I, helped earlier with one of the with the gpu miner um for ox bitcoin and it was literally the first um uh nvidia c plus plus code that i ever wrote um and i was kind of doing it alongside other people in the discord and sharing code around and that was kind of the open source spirit with which we're grounded in and um, welcoming people um to help out or or not you know if they don't have time or aren't interested that's you know it is what it is yeah like so like in infernal toast he's the contract deployer um he's the one who, you know press execute on the contract deployed the contract but he'll be the first one to like tell you every time somebody comes in and says hey can i use your can i use xerox bitcoin to implement it into this he said you know he'll say hey it's open source i can't stop you you do what you want to do you know and that and then you know and he really is you know he really is kind of a Kind of the uh you know what what grounded this community in uh in that kind of attitude you know do you guys have any partnerships in the works like on or off the blockchain it's, it's funny what jeff up just said is that you know it's um we kind of can't make anyone do it partner with us in the sense that we don't have 30 million dollars mm -hmm. that we're trying to burn in the next five years or, or whatever in the next year um, at the same time, we can't stop anyone, um, which is all cool and all within kind of the, the cypherpunk um, spirit of, of crypto. Um, but, you know, with that in mind, we're as encouraging as we can about people. So uh, recently someone built something called Wheel of Bitcoin, Wheel of OXBitcoin.io. And it's uh, a gambling, um, I, I think it's fair to call it a gambling app, a gambling dApp. Um, I don't know if there's legal issues with me saying that, um, but you know, and I didn't necessarily have any part of it, um, but 
it's awesome. He kind of built this whole website and it makes fun noises when you when you go to it and win money or <laughs> lose money. Um, and it's just something that uh, uh, he did. And, um, and along the way, we encouraged him and uh, tested it. And uh, when he launched it, shared it around, I think uh, it did a at everyone tag um, when it was live. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we didn't didn't make him do that. And, you know, we didn't, no one that I know of uh, paid him anything to do that. And uh, he did it because he likes OX Bitcoin. He wanted to learn, he wanted to build it. Um, yeah, and, and also as um, Lieutenant Tofu is saying in the chat now, once you, the, there's interesting economics of it. So you actually deposit your own tokens into it, and then you proportionally get that much of the, the house edge as you kind of go ahead with it. Um, and so he, uh, the token, the contract deployer, Wheel of OX Bitcoin, built the project because of he has some financial edge in, in the project that has evolved. Um, and then there's been um, uh, software developers who created miners um and those and those miners um you know they create a add a mining fee that's optional and you can turn off um in their miners so there's there's some upside for them but i'm sure if you look at um how much money they'd get per hour for working on this gpu code um you know it's something below minimum wage for really complicated software development so as as we're saying it's kind of all about um digging the community. It's all about, about learning um, and exploring. Um, some some things going on that we've seen people come in and, and come out about in the Discord and our other public channels is this idea behind making a, a or dApps around uh, games where the actual gaming items um, would be mineable items. So if you were imagining kind of like a a uh, Pokemon blue or red kind of game where um, you could mine Pokemon um, or something like that, or maybe you'd need to mine your starter Pokemon. And there's interesting finances there where you can actually um, have that hash power go to the deployer of the game and they can kind of run their own mining pool. And so on one hand, you can get these, these fun game items um, and on the other hand, the pool or the game deployer can um, actually like get OX Bitcoin in value from their mining pool. Um, so there's kind of interesting stuff there that I think over time um, will evolve. And kind of the more that we kind of open and encourage the community, the more that someone will come along and say, that sounds really complicated and challenging, but I want to learn by doing and, and build it. And I'm sure over time, as that continues, some bigger projects will will come into the space and join it. And what's kind of great about that is that um, uh, it's something that you can do because it's it's based on Ethereum and because the the mints are all uh, Solidity or Ethereum transactions. But something like Wheel of OX, of OX Bitcoin, you you couldn't really do um, inside of Bitcoin because you can't really make um, transferring and other things about Bitcoin programmable in the same way that you can inside Ethereum and, and inside Solidity. And, and in the, the chat, um, some folks are also saying that um, AIO miner or all-in-one miner um, and, and Shane from that project has been really, really mm -hmm. helpful with us. And he's the RGPU mining uh, mod. He's kind of been awesome and yeah, really loves what we're doing, has been really responsive and, and helpful. Um, to that. Um, yeah, and if anyone else, I know there's a big team of people here on the chat. If anyone else wants to kind of fill in um, on the Jeffs. Yeah, man, um, you know, like kind of like what we've been touching on, you know, if, um, you know, it's, like I said, it's a real grassroots project, but a lot of us spend a lot of our time working on it, you know, and, um, uh, you know, like it's, there's nothing in the, we don't have anything you know, I wish I had something to say, you know, something big <laughs> to say, you know, but, um, you know, it, it, these Turn things, happen, they, they happen all the time, you know, so it's, we're always, we're, we're excited about just the little, littlest things, you know what I mean? So like, 
every time we we have a lot of breakthroughs and we have a we have a lot of ideas and um that's kind of why we created the uh, zero x bitcoin foundation was to kind of help kind of manage the flow of some of these ideas you know and and try to some of these projects and then hopefully one day the the zero x bitcoin foundation can be able to help fund some of these things you know and and qg this is a a big this is actually a big one for us and i don't know if you'd call this a partnership but just uh thank you for inviting us on and giving us this this time and space to share you know some of what we've been doing and and get that out there so and it's it's kind of um yeah people like you who care about crypto and are creating their own communities who are willing to give us a a little um yeah a little time so we're trying to get out there more for for meetups and kind of uh word and and see who we can find who says oh that you know i was i heard about ox bitcoin i didn't i thought it was whatever and then i spoke to some of the people involved in the project and now i get it and i think it's it's interesting and it's cool and and so that's kind of slowly but surely how we're we're building um yeah yeah it's not one of those projects that you uh that sometimes people they're you can easily describe right away to a lot of people you know um you you kind of have to have a, a grasp of crypto you know it, it's hard to it's hard for me to like to explain this to my mother you know or, or my wife like what i'm trying to do and i and i always still do i try to explain it to my wife all the time but it's um you know it, it, it's just unless you're like in crypto and you know what ethereum is you know what tokens are you know the difference between these things you know it, it's not an easily uh graspable graspable concepts but I think it will be, you know. I, I, I think, think once be. more DAS become popular on Ethereum to just the general public, this will be much easier to grasp. Mm-hmm. I'd also like to see more communication with the Ethereum team and Ethereum representatives in the future. Um, whether they agree with what they're doing or if they disagree and want to just have some constructive discourse, I, I think that'll be great. And I think that'll come in the future as well. And I'm loving what you guys are building here. You guys came prepared and it really sounds like a solid grassroots community that's really trying to be more decentralized than uh, the majority of the tokens that claim, you know, decentralization, but end up being more centralized than Ripple. Um, but since we are getting close to the end here, let's move into the giveaway that you guys mentioned. Do you guys want to take point on that real quick? We thought it was in the spirit of, of mining, so we found some trivia questions that you kind of need to answer by looking up some info on chain and kind of, I guess the best way to do that would be digging around Etherscan. Transaction hash of the Ethereum transaction that deployed the OX Bitcoin contract. All right, so while we wait on the answer to that question, um, do we want to touch a little bit more on, you know, who is the staff and, you know, how do you guys pick the staff? Is there a team? Uh, how how does all that come about? And we've kind of hit on this, but just want to reiterate that there really is no team per se. There's some developers or some contributing members that contribute more so than other people, but it's just a community. Um, <laughs> there's never yes, no. There there's so there's like never been a staff. There's nobody's ever received compensation really directly for their work. Um, a few people in the community have you know they might pay a bounty to somebody because like oh this person did this i'll you know i'll donate a few uh, zero x bitcoin to their address and um that's you know that happens in the community people might want to share their address and a couple of people donate to them but we're not talking about a lot of money here you know you know we're talking you know maybe you know maybe 50 or 100 zero x bitcoin you know if that you know so um yeah there's nothing we're not even I don't know, Mike, you want to finish that up? Art? Yeah, yeah. So the the foundation is um, the the only thing we've we've done so far is um, last week there was a all in one miner um, Twitter giveaway for Free Hash Friday, and so we we paid out um, seventy tokens for that. So 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 far um, it's really just been a kind of group of people that um, created a a Reddit for OX Bitcoin or uh, wrote a minor wrote minor code on GitHub and released it. Um, and that's likely how, how things are going to grow. So it's, it's very different, um, from, from other projects where, 
uh, even other um, Bitcoin fork type groups where there's kind of a, a pre-mine and some of that funding is used into it, um, where, you know, just kind of whoever shows up and whoever's here um, and, and we're growing um, pretty well and I'm pretty happy with the, the community that that's that's come about through it and and there's kind of ways what's cool about it is you know it's it's programmable money that works on a smart contract so if you're interested in OX Bitcoin there's kind of ways to make um, uh, financially viable for you at uh, the current market cap and the the current prices you know there's there's only so much that you can kind of get out of things um, so that does keep uh, people limited to kind of enthusiasts. Um, but for now that that keeps it, the community kind of tight and we know that anyone who's here is for the most part um, putting their time into the community because they're they're interested in it and, and they care about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah and, and down the line we'd like to see ends in more direction that way and and especially in something that we didn't quite um, harp on or emphasize that I think is super important is that um, because OX Bitcoin is a, a token and that it's both mineable and within the Ethereum platform, it's uh, not susceptible at all to 51% attacks. Um, so if someone has 100% of the hash power on OX Bitcoin, they can't actually censor transactions. So they can't censor distribution or transfer uh, rather just transfer of tokens or um, which you could do with every other pure mineable token or coin like Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. And even if there's news um, coming out where next week someone is announced that they're planning to 51% attack and live stream the Einsteinium cryptocurrency. He says, uh, this is the biggest, most established coin I can afford to attack. So, you know, security is, is super important in, in the crypto space because it's, um, yeah, anyone, there's, it's kind of permissionless. Um, so, so that's a big important aspect of it is that I feel really safe and, and some of the memes around, uh, around the web say comfy um, with OX Bitcoin is because it's, uh, it's a small community of a mineable token, but it, it's as secure as Ethereum. So it, it can't really die in the sense that it's a smart contract on Ethereum and anyone can transfer it for now if you want to pay the gas fees and in the future if you want to pay the OX Bitcoin lava wallet fees. Um, but but so that that's what's really unique about it is that it's um, secured by Ethereum but mineable. Awesome. So uh, yeah. So so it looks like um, we have uh, our, our answer to the, the first uh, question. Mm -hmm. uh, which is what is the transaction hash of the Ethereum transaction that deployed the OX Bitcoin contract. And what's kind of cool about that is that um, I've learned from doing a lot of solidity in Ethereum development is that that's actually the uh, SHA hash of kind of the full transaction. So it includes the from, the, the metadata around the smart contract, the nonce, the gas price, and, and that's how they, they come up with that um, transaction hash. So kind of some trivia there. Um, Jeff Duck, do you want to load the, yeah. the next uh, the next question? Yeah. What what Ethereum block number was the 0x Bitcoin contract deployed on? The block number. Next one in here, we'll do a double whammy. Um, it's a uh, right here. What address is the uh, largest holder of 0x Bitcoin? So uh, what's the address of the largest holder? I like these questions because they kind of felt like you're mining, like you're kind of digging around. <laughs> now, I don't want to give away the answer here, but I am curious. Uh, how much does the top token holder of 0x BTC have um, percentage-wise? Percentage-wise, it, it, some I know somebody knows, but it's it's really small, like really, really, really small. Um, like your third user yeah, and interestingly, email. that's um, the likely uh, one of the exchanges. So the the top holders are all kind of yeah. um, exchanges. 
Um, and I, I guess that's that's usually the case. Um, so Etherscan has a funny way of doing it. So I'm, I'm looking at the, the page where, where the answer is to the trivia question um, on Etherscan. And so, so it says that that's 0.78% um, um, that, that holder, but they, they look at that out of the total kind of possible supply of, of 21 million. Um, and there's kind of only 3 million or so minted. So more likely just it's, it's 10x that. Um, so around 8% um, are on that exchange. And then the next few wallets are kind of 4%, 4%, 4%. Um, and so and then it's this long tail of um, a number of addresses, which I won't say just yet, because it's the answer to one of the trivia <laughs> questions. Um, but uh, it's, it's pretty well distributed. And, and that's something that kind of speaks to uh, Infernal Toast's uh, <laughs> kind of uh, genius and, and making a, a mineable um, distributed token and kind of announcing it out there kind of on day one, uh, hey, get in here and, and start mining. Here's the contract, here's the wallet, here's the miner. And and I didn't I didn't didn't mine it, you know, when it first came out. Um, I didn't even know about it. But from what I understand and what uh, he said and what I've heard from other people who have, uh, there was actually a pretty good little handful of number of people mining it the very first day. And it it's it's very reassuring too because you know you have this developer um at, you know infernal toast and he deploys this contract and he has to he has to mine it just like everybody else he has to do the proof of work to get the token just like everybody else and so you know it's reassuring to really know that there's there's not really an unfair advantage to uh, the way it's distributed you know you could even say it's less uh you know uh, less lopsided than um bitcoin essentially because there were probably less people mining there when it first came out you know when bitcoin came out versus this yeah i think the the satoshi wallet has about you know i think it's like eight hundred thousand um bitcoin and um so far there's only around three million ox bitcoin mined so mm -hmm. <laughs> that kind of speaks to the the difference there yeah yeah toasty got uh number two <laughs> Yep, uh, pronounceable. That's uh, five million and thirty-nine thousand. That's the Ethereum block number that OX Bitcoin was deployed on. Man, that block number is uh, that's a very round block number. Uh, did you guys do that on purpose? Did you like schedule the contract to be that way, or was that completely by coincidence? <laughs> I, I guess that's a question for Infernal Toast. <laughs> you know, I... <laughs> he said that was an accident. <laughs> Cool. And what was our cool? And let me uh, throw in our, our last uh, question. So you're saying the foundation's a corporation. Is it a registered corporation uh, legally? Uh, it's a real um, nonprofit uh, corporation. It's um, based in Florida, and so we have a, a board of directors, and we have um, comp I, I think yeah, corporation um, bylaws, um, and essentially um, we have the board vote um and uh, uh so far there hasn't really been any rifts it's been kind of small things and we're also all pretty like-minded um but yeah ultimately there's a set of um corporate bylaws that that decides um how we can distribute funds um and and one kind of point on that is that um you know this is a foundation that i, I think I'd, I'd have to refresh the technical terms, but it's where uh, motivated and um, spreading the awareness of OX Bitcoin. Um, but you know, anyone else could create an OX Bitcoin foundation and could kind of do the same. So it's it's not necessarily the OX Bitcoin foundation; it's a OX Bitcoin foundation, um, in in the sense that it you know is just a distributed project, and no one kind of controls anything, et cetera. Um, but yeah, so, so far we, we kind of vote. Um, now this doesn't matter too much, but is this a tax deductible nonprofit corporation? Has it been filed that way? Uh, Cause that could be very beneficial to uh, investors and those who want to donate. I think it's a 501 C seven corp. And so you, um, if you donate uh, funds and you can't necessarily um, ex write them off, but you don't have to, 
um, which requires uh, extra kind of scrutiny. But if you do donate, you don't have to, my understanding is that you don't have to, uh, you can write it off in a, in a also helpful way. Um, um, to that point, kind of, I think to this further your question, Kuji. Um, so uh, a lot of the the early miners kind of understood the importance of the project and understood that there weren't funds available for it. So tended to kind of donate um, to the, which was kind of cool to the smart contract. I, I think someone figured that out um, that there was this kind of owner of the smart contract and a lot of smart contracts have owners and that gives that address special privileges. And so there was this one um, thing that the owner of the OX Bitcoin contract could do, which was any um, tokens sent to the smart contract could be sent by the owner. So um, this kind of anonymous way of, of funding the project became um, as you mine or as a pool kind of collects funds, they could send funds to the contract and kind of feel confident that that would go towards the community and that would pay bounties. Um, and, and so uh, there was a early uh, GPU miner who actually wrote their own uh, GPU miner and distributed that miner and ran a pool called Pizza. Um, <laughs> and there's a, a fun kind of month or two there where I was building the open source GPU miner with a, a bunch of the team, a bunch of the crew, um, and pizza had beaten us to the punch and had his own <laughs> closed source, um, <laughs> GPU miner, um, which initially he was mining on his own and then he distributed a binary and ran a pool, but he was awesome and kind of encouraged a lot of competition and, and also donated a, a lot of those funds that kind of the the foundation is kind of helping to distribute yeah and then up until recently they were actually in they were in the contract itself but uh, was it just yesterday um well, well maybe you can go into more technical micros on, on what happened with that and how were how those changed with the contract so, uh, uh infernal toast who's who's listening um he uh essentially um uh, the other day took all the funds that were in the smart contract and kind of took them out of the ox bitcoin contract and then changed the ownership of the ox bitcoin contract to kind of a a small uh essentially on purpose um useless contract um, to essentially burn ownership of it. So um, we see some commentary that it was kind of weird that there was um, an owner of OX Bitcoin, like if it's decentralized and in a lot, and it all depends on how you program it. And a lot of um, like the Gemini uh, USD um, smart contract, um, the Gemini dollar, or, um, there's an owner to it. And that owner can do a whole mess of things. Um, and it's really just how the code is written. And so the OX Bitcoin owner could do almost nothing except rescue funds out of it. Um, but kind of just to make things clearer that there is no real thing that that owner can do, um, Toast uh, drain the funds that were there and then set the owner to kind of a, a burn account order, um, all kind of on purpose just to kind of close things off. So like simpler words, it's just, you know, the contract is now you could say 110 percent autonomous you know um nobody owns the contract but you know an odorless contract owns the contract uh, back to our our last question um basically the answer is uh floating around in the chat except that the person that put it out there just won the question before um so we're kind of just waiting on uh on someone to just uh Kind of I, guess a uh, answer that someone's already thrown out there. Wasn't um, uh, didn't there we go. <laughs> we got the, we got the answer. <laughs> All right. All right. Looks like we have a few winners here. Uh, how should they contact you guys for their ten zero x Bitcoin tokens? E either yeah. one of us, I guess. So uh, you can ping me, or uh, it's it's all uh, it's all kind of people that um, you know we, we didn't. Uh, mean to stack the the audience here but it's all kind of people that i've i've spoken to before um so i'll, I'll follow up with all of them anybody who has any questions you can just send them over to the discord 
because um, our, our Discord is super helpful, super friendly, and we have a lot of community members who are, you know, always willing to help and ask questions. Well, hey, you guys, we ran a little bit longer than usual, but I think it was all really great stuff. And I look forward to he keep hearing about the project in the future, as well as keeping an eye on its progress. Um, I think what you guys are building here is just remarkable. Um, and it looks like most of the Discord questions uh, that were asked throughout the program got answered uh, just throughout the interview. And it looks like our Twitch and YouTube and everything else, those guys are all happy with what's been posted. Um, so thank you so much for joining us again. We really appreciate it and uh, can't wait to have you guys back out maybe in a few months, maybe next year. Um, but definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and, and thanks thank again you. so much. Yeah, thanks for giving us the opportunity. You know, we don't get a lot of, uh, it's, it's hard to come across these things. And so when we do, we're super grateful for it.